Hi everyone, this is Mukta Sharma. Testing Insights by Mukta Sharma presents on-demand topics, Java Oops concept for test automation related to real-time Selenium framework with lots of examples. So in this video, we will go through um, the Selenium framework. I mean, I will give you examples which you can relate with the Java Oops concept. I will explain what is Oop and what is Oops concept, and then we will relate it with Selenium test automation framework for your understanding and more clarity. Please watch the video till the end and let me know what do you think about the video. Manual testers or beginner automation testers who want to learn Java Oops in a simple practical way, who wants to connect theory with Selenium automation framework design and who are preparing for interview these days or who wants to implement in your project work, this video is for everyone. OOPS. So what is OOP? OOP stands for Object Oriented Programming Language. It's a programming language that structures the software around objects. When we say oops, oops means you can think of as objects. It will revolve around objects rather than just logic and functions. An object is simply a real world entity like a login page, a test case, a button or even a user. These all are objects. Each object has two main things. One is properties. Properties means like you call it as uh, variables like username and browser name. These are your properties. These are your variables. And when we say actions, actions means methods. Methods like what? Like login method, click button methods like that. So what, what do you understand until now? An object is a real world entity like your login page, test case or button, everything uh, sort of this is an object and every object has two main things one is properties and second is actions so instead of writing one big block of code oops encourage you to break down a problem into smaller reusable and organized objects so when you build your test automation framework using selenium and java oops become your foundation you have you can implement oops concept to make it as a robust test automation framework what do you do? You create classes for pages. Pages like, let's say you have um, Amazon. So for the login page, dashboard page, search page, product page, add to cart page, payment page, these all for all these web pages, you are creating classes. That means you are implementing page object model. Then we use objects to run those classes, run those uh, Java tests. Then we will reuse code with inheritance. I will explain each and every concept in detail. Hide complexity using abstraction, protect sensitive data using encapsulation and write flexible methods using polymorphism. Basically, what is OOP? The design language of every modern test automation framework. Now, these are the five concepts in OOP. That is how it makes OOP, OOP's concept. Classes and objects first, inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation, abstraction. These are the five major and crucial concepts uh, which makes um, Java is a strong uh, pro programming language, object-oriented programming language. Classes and objects now here i have written the meaning and then one example for your understanding classes and objects like classes and objects means blueprint and instance test automation example a test case object of a test class inheritance is what reuse parent feature polymorphism one action many forms we can remember it in this way poly means many more poly, poly means one and morphism means many forms encapsulation means hiding the details Abstraction means show only what is needed. So now we can relate it with our test automation framework. Let's say inheritance, you reuse parent features, reusing common browser setup from a base class. Polymorphism, same method, like login method is there, but you can use it differently. Encapsulation, locators and actions. Locators and actions wrapped inside page classes. Abstraction, show only what is needed, only expose high level test steps to the tester. Now we will discuss in detail with the help of one code example. Class and object, a class is a blueprint like a page or a test, an object is actual browser session or user scenario created from that class. In your test automation framework, every page is built using classes. Every page means you can you can take the example of any uh, web application, your dashboard page, login page, search page, login page, um, 
add to cart page payments page these all are pages and how do you build those pages you will build those pages using classes and you create objects to perform actions on those pages like you will click login um, submit button and whatsoever to remember these two quick things concept class is a template object is instance of the class real-time use case like test case classes page object classes utility classes now we will see with the help of one example what do i mean by classes and objects so that you can relate it with your test automation framework we have a class called login test and then we have created a method called run test now we are printing running login test and now we have created a main method where we have created an object called test of which class login class so we are creating an object of the class login class so that we can call the method which method run test so when i say login test test is equal to new login test that means i am creating an object of the login test what is the object name test and with the help of this object and dot operator i am calling the method run test so in this example you are creating a class as well as you are creating an object of the class to call a specific method clear like creating login page is login is equal to new login page driver in selenium framework you are creating an object to interact with the login functionality so this is about classes and objects if you have any doubt on this section please write down in the comments and let me know if you understand the concept now yeah second is inheritance inheritance lets you reuse the code in your test automation framework common setup and tear down like browser launch and you close the browser right these type of things goes into base class again classes are always being used in your framework okay in the base class and all your test classes extend it to reuse that code without repeating so when you extend your class with the base class you will use inheritance concept in there how do you remember inheritance child classes inherit from parent classes there are two there are classes like let's say there is a class a there is a class b this class b you have inherited from class a so that means child class is inheriting properties of a parent class test classes inherit setup tear down from a base class for example in your selenium test automation framework when when you create a base class you have web driver setup method in there which you which your child classes use it right in your child classes you just say extend base class extend base page and you can use the methods which you have created in the base page class example also for your understanding we have created a class called base test and then we have created a method called setup in the setup method we are just printing browser launch and then we are tearing it down we are closing it browser closed now i have created one more class say login test which extend base test now when you use the keyword extend that means this is login test is your child class which is getting extended from your base class what is a base class base test now i am creating a method run login test and printing execute login test in the main method i am creating an object of this class login page login test class and with the help of this object i am calling the method test.setup which is in the base test right that means i am inheriting this method from the base class test.run login test again test specific and test.tear down again i am inheriting so you are inheriting the methods uh, created in your base class in your child classes this is called inheritance concept you don't need to write web driver setup or close in every test you can just put it in base class and then in your child classes you can say extends and then you can use you can call the methods using the object of that particular class yeah polymorphism polymorphism poly means one morphism means many means um, one method can behave differently depending upon the context like you can create one method but depending on the context it can behave differently for example in selenium you might have the same method login right you can log in as a user normal user you can log in as an admin user so you can define the different set of parameters in polymorphism let's there are two types of polymorphism in java one is method overloading which we say compile time polymorphism method overloading means you define multiple methods with the same name but parameters are different 
you have to remember this polymorphism is of two types method overloading and method overriding method overloading is called compile time polymorphism it means you define multiple methods with the same name but the parameters are different and then we have method overriding which we call it during runtime this is useful when a function like login might take username and password or username and otp or maybe username and password and a row like multiple parameters we are passing when you need to pass multiple parameters in a specific method that means you are overloading the method that is called method overloading example you are creating a class login page and you have created a method called login which takes two parameters username and password then you are printing it on the screen login with username and password and then again you have created one more method login which takes a token and login with token in the main class you are creating an object of your login page what is the um, object here page with the help of this page uh, with the help of this page object i am calling the method login and passing the parameters user and password right and with the help of again page dot login i am just passing the value login a uh, one time uh, login taken so when the method is same but you are passing different parameters you call it as method overloading you are overloading the method you might overload click button or set input in your test automation framework for different input types when you want to input uh, um, what do we say input last name or maybe uh, country name or something click button you are ex it is accepting different number of different type of input values then that time you are implementing method overloading concept similarly you can have a look at the automation framework and see uh, where is overloading concept gets implemented now let's talk about method overriding method overriding happens when a child class provides its own version of a method which is already defined in the parent class this is a parent class this is a child class there is a method defined in parent class but child class a child class when it wants to use this method it will define its own version it will add some more parameters or maybe some more methods like that it is resolved at runtime based on the object type example let's say you have a class base page class you have a method called open system.out.println says opening generic page and then you have a login page class which is being extended from base page class now you are again creating this open method but this time you are overriding the method right and you are saying opening login page that means this um, login page class child class it has provided its own version of a method open which was already defined in the parent class in the parent class we were saying that okay you use open method and um, print opening generic page but when it got overridden in the pay base class uh, then and then it has defined its own version right so this is how it works and then in the main class again you are creating an object of the base uh, main class pa base page page is equal to new login page parent reference and then page dot open it will call the overridden method here yeah so this is about uh, method overloading and method overriding compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism there is a small table also for a quick revision you can have a look at that yeah maybe you can take a notebook and pen with you and make a note uh, with you in your diary when if you are preparing for interviews this is also um, a visual representation method overloading method overriding method overloading same class usage method overriding different class yeah method overloading uses different parameters whereas method overriding use identical parameters method overloading um, gives flexible return types whereas method overriding gives you consistent return types yeah now let's talk about the another concept in oops object oriented programming system encapsulation encapsulation is about keeping your locators and implementation private means you are hiding the internal details internal logic of the application without exposing the interface right this keeps your framework clean and reduces errors for example real time how will you relate it to that private locators with public action methods in your page object model that is encapsulation you are encapsulating the locators and keeping the implementation private example you are creating a class called login page class and then you have declared two variables 
private string username, private string password. Why do I have written private? Because these are access modifiers in Java. It means these are private variables. Outside classes won't be able to access it. These are, this will be private to its own class. Then we have a method called login login method where I have uh, created system.out.println it will print the username and password and then in the main class I am creating an object of this class with the help of this object of this class I am calling the login method that means it this test uses only public method it uses only public method so it has hidden the other details in POM locators and low level actions are private test classes just call login page dot login Another example, public class login page and then private by username. Yeah, in your automation test um, Selenium framework, you are identifying this uh, username field, password field and private uh, web driver driver. Then you are just uh, calling the login function and passing send keys using send key function. You are passing the username and password. So you are, um, if you see explicitly, you are never directly interacting with the locators in the test cases. You are just calling the login function and the other rest implementation details are hidden. So this is how you are using encapsulation in your test automation framework. Yeah, it is a little bit complex. Again, listen to me and uh, let me know what do you think about it. If you have any doubts, write down in the comments. We both of us can share abstraction. Abstraction hides the inner working of actions and only shows what is necessary. Testers don't need to know how the search product functionality works. They just call the method. We define the class by using the keyword abstract. Abstract means abstraction. You are keeping the things abstracting from the other, <clears throat> other, uh, other variables or methods. Abstract page class, um, class page, and then you have created a method called uh, open page. So when you create any class or method, you use the keyword abstract there. Okay, then you are using inheritance. You are calling, creating a method called open page, then opening page. In the main class, you are creating an object of this login page class. And with the help of this object, um, login dot open page, only the needed function is exposed. Only this will be exposed. So this is encapsulation. Oh, sorry, abstraction. I'm sorry, ex uh, abstraction. This test script see only simple calls like login page dot uh, login or dashboard dot open complex actions like waiting, clicking or validating, right? These type of actions, these type of uh, user actions, these are abstracted inside the page class. This will not be shown to the, you know, um, other part. This will be only shown wherever it is necessary. So this is abstraction. So next time when you are building or maintaining your Selenium test automation framework, think about these concepts and how you can relate it with your test automation framework. We, In this video, we learned about classes and objects, inheritance, method uh, overloading, polymorphism, method overloading and method overriding, abstraction and encapsulation. Your page classes are built using encapsulation and abstraction. Your test classes use inheritance concept. And the way you reuse your method is all thanks to polymorphism. Oops, is not just theory. It's about the, it's the backbone of real automation framework. Thank you so much for with that. And I hope uh, this video will be useful to you. Please let me know if you have any questions. And we can discuss more in the comment section. I will be waiting for your comments on the video. Yeah, all right, guys. Bye-bye.